guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kiana. I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos, and clearly I have a lot of energy today. Today is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to you guys. I'm wearing a pink sweatshirt. I have some pink eyeshadow on. We're in front of the pink wall. I'm in the holiday spirit, I guess. Yeah, however, a little bit of a problem. I did not make a Valentine's Day theme video for today, to post today. And I said I did. Technically, I said I was making a Valentine's Day dress. I didn't say exactly when I was gonna post it, so I'm not a liar. Um, but yeah, I was supposed to make this dress. You probably saw it in my sewing plans video. Didn't make it. Not because I'm lazy, just because I've been busy. So I, I didn't quite have time to get it on time. So today, we are going to be making that dress. Now I'm out of breath too, because I was jumping all around. Let me get the fabric to refresh your memories. Here it is. I've had this for maybe like a year and a half now. I have like four yards, I think. No, maybe three yards. I don't know. But it's this crepe back satin. So gorgeous. So girly. Anyways, I also have this like rhinestone like strap material that I want to do for the straps. I want to make a girly Valentine's Day dress. So that's what we're going to do today. Let me show you something I've actually already been working on. Let me bring you in, actually. So actually, this is not a dress I have been working on. This, I just draped this in like literally five minutes. This, like I taped it out and I draped it in like five minutes to take some photos because I needed to submit photos for something. I was like, wait, this, this like neckline of this cup is like really cute. And then I was thinking, imagine this. What if I did a heart <gasps> cut out right here, right above your belly button. I know, it's a lot, it's a lot, but I think that's what's fun about it. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I wanna show you guys how I would do it. I also have never done that before, so we're gonna challenge ourselves. We're gonna challenge ourselves with the heart cut out in the center of the dress. So I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna take this off. This was very quick. I might also take this off, re-tape, and then I'm gonna show you how to drape. All right guys, so I'm just using draping tape or rather I'm using washi tape because I like that a lot more. And I'm just marking out my style lines. As you can see here, the like midsection is very easy. Just four panels on the back and three panels on the front total. And the interesting part is more of the bust cup and the neckline. Like I said, this first piece, I'm not really gonna go into too much detail because I already did it, but the second piece, don't worry, I'm gonna go hard for you guys in the explanation. So basically I take my muslin, I smooth it out, I clip into it, I pin it down, and then I mark it and label it. Then I'm going to trim it down just so I can place it on the form again. And here is where the deep explanation is going to come from. So I use muslin fabric for draping, making sure it's all nice with no creases in it. And if you can see here, I actually have a pencil line straight up and down through the center. That's my grain line, just so I can make sure that this fabric stays on grain and I know where my fabric needs to go on grain later on when I'm making the pattern. I'm kind of pinning and smoothing the fabric down. Oh, also don't forget your green line should be going straight up and down, but I'm just pinning and smoothing. And whenever I have like a kind of a crease in the fabric, I clip into that fabric just to make it lay as, as flat as humanly possible. You can see it's just, it's just a process. You go back and forth, back and forth until it's laying nice and flat. And then I'm grabbing my pencil and just making dots all around the style lines so I know where to mark it when I take it off the form. And then when I'm taking it off, oh, also don't forget to label it while it's on the form or else you could forget which piece it is. I'm just using a straight edge of a ruler and also the curved edge of my French curve to true everything up and make sure all those lines make sense and are connecting nice and smoothly. And then I'm gonna cut my piece out, but I'm actually gonna leave about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch left around the edges just so I can pin that up easily on the form. This is just my drape, it's not my pattern piece, so I don't need to worry about making it even. Then I'm going to take the piece that was already on my form, I'm gonna fold it up, and then I'm going to pin those two pieces together. I'm not gonna um, pin like crazy, I'm just taking a little stitch of fabric right from the seam line to kind of mimic that it's being sewn. So it still has like free range of motion. Then when the two of those are together, I'm gonna make sure they connect evenly, and so I'm just gonna use my ruler to redraw that line. And then I'm just gonna place it back on the form and continue this process. 
Okay, so I am done with the midsection. Now I'm going to move on to the bust cup. Um, a lot of people wanted to see how I draped that, so we're gonna go in more depth with that. But to check if you're doing the draping right, if it's all gonna work out in the end, when you put your pinned drape back up on the form, you should be able to hold it in place securely with only a few pins. So to place this on the form, I have one, two, three pins. That's it. I don't have to like kind of pull and manipulate it into place. It just kind of drapes and lays exactly how it's supposed to lay, which if it does it on here, then it'll do it on your body. All right, now on to the bust. Okay guys, this is the tricky part. Um, the other ones were kind of easy because you just smooth it out and you call it a day, but for the bust, you're going to have to kind of tug and pull at it. Now, also, I want you guys to notice where all of my grain lines are going for all of these bust cup pieces because none of them are going straight up and down. They're all got, kind of going at an angle. So just look at each and every one because they're different. For this, same process, pulling and pinning and then marking, but I'm going to have to kind of pull and tug and spread out the piece a little bit more so that it can go around the curve. The hardest part is to make these two pieces line up, so the left and right pieces on the bust cup, just because right here down the center or down that princess line, that princess seam, it's really hard to get them to fit together smoothly. You're going to have to really tug and pull, but not tug too much that you're distorting it. It's really just a process of trial and error, 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 and just moving everything around. See how I'm just pinning, pinning, moving. And then I'm also, once I mark this out and pin it together with the other one, I'm gonna put it back on the form and I'm gonna adjust it even more. So you'll see in a second, I remove the pins from that princess seam line because see, it's not matching up perfectly. It's kind of pulling away from the body. And I'm just going to adjust that a little bit more just to make it lay nice and flat. And this is gonna be more challenging the more pronounced the bust on your dress form is. For instance, mine is definitely pronounced. Some dress forms have a nice and like gentle slope, but for this, um, it's a little bit trickier. So some dress forms are easier, mine's a little bit harder, but again, it's just a trial and error. This last piece is definitely the easiest. When you're doing it, just make sure that it's close to the body at the neckline. You wanna pull it and angle it so it's close at the neckline. Otherwise, it's going to gape around that neckline area. And here's what it looks like when it's all finished. Again, you wanna make sure that it's gently just laying on the dress form and it's not tugging in any weird ways. So this looks good, so we are ready to move on. Here are all my pattern pieces. I just removed them, took them apart, and pressed them flat. And then I would just trace them on some regular cardstock or paper. Personally, I like to scan them in and then trace them on my computer so that I have them for life in case I ever um, lose them. I always have them saved on my external hard drive. Now I'm just gonna cut out all those pattern pieces. As you can see here, I accidentally cut that back, center back pattern piece on the fold. I forgot that, you know, you need a closure. I need a zipper, so I need a seam allowance at the center back seam. But I'm just cutting everything out, cutting two basically of everything. And I'm also making sure to notch where I need to notch. So I'm notching on the top bust piece where those other two bust piece will connect to it. Now I'm just gonna sew together all of those vertical seam lines where the midsection is under the bust cups. I'm gonna sew them all together and then I'm gonna press those. And this is just the most satisfying part for me is when I'm pressing a bunch of vertical seam lines. Ooh, look at that. Just enjoy this clip. It's so relaxing. I also sew the left and right bust cup pieces together before attaching it to the top piece. And when you do this, you wanna press it really, really, really well. That is the key. The key is pressing. And then you can connect it to the top bust piece. And then you can finally connect the bust cups into the rest of the garment. This is challenging because you're sewing reverse curves. You're gonna to have to ease the curves into each other. One side is gonna be longer than the other just because of the seam allowance. So it's gonna be a little tricky. So really just take your time. And then I'm gonna repeat that entire process again with the bodice lining. So I'm just using some pink cotton fabric. And then here it goes all done and then i'll have the lining and the shell but i'm not quite ready to sew those two pieces together all right so now it's time to do the skirt and the skirt honestly is just easier if you flat pattern it because it's not like form fitting to the body it's just it's such an easy thing to flat pattern but 
before we do, here are some things we want to keep in mind. Here is the lining. You want to make sure that your vertical seam lines on your bodice and your skirt match up. So important things, the side seams. You got to make sure the length of the skirt or the width of the skirt in the front is the same as the width of the bodice in the front. And then the width of the skirt in the back is the same as the width of the bodice in, ba in the back. So that the side seams can match up. And then something people forget about a lot of the times is darts matching up. So um, since this bodice has this like princess seam right here in the back, um, we want to line that up with the dart on the back of the skirt. So we don't want the dart to end up lining up with the bodice over here or over here. We want it to hit right here. So that is a seamless transition into the dart. People forget about that a lot. And that is what can make your garment look homemade. So you want, you want something that look professional. You want to think about all the little details. So I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to show you the skirt. Super easy. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it though, because I know you guys got this, you got this. Here is my workspace so far. Of course, at the top, you got the bodice pieces that I already made. And then here, the bottom. On the left is where I was like drafting. And then on the right is more of the final all cleaned up. So how I did this, let's, let's zoom in over here a little bit. Let's go over it. So you already know what this front measurement needs to be. So that is where this line comes from. I kind of drew straight lines to help guide me when figuring out how long my curved lines needed to be. And then the same thing for my hip. I just measured my hips, divided them by four, and made this line. And I added some ease, of course, because I don't want skin tight on my booty. Yeah, I did the length I wanted. I made that the correct length. And then I curved the waistline a little bit just because um, I don't want it to be like stick straight bodycon. And a lot of the time skirts are just curved like that to fit around your waist. And when I wanted it to slightly jut outwards, I didn't want it to go straight down bodycon. So that's why it's like this. Yeah, I also made the side seams to be the exact same angle. As you can see, there's more space for the hips in the back than in the front. That's because you know, we're gonna need more space for your butt than you do in the front. This just kind of naturally happens, that extra space is in the bust because at the waistline, um, this waistline ends up being a little bit bigger and then there's a dart here to take out extra space for the butt. So you need space for your butt. You can't just have the same front piece and the same back piece. So, so to get space for the butt, you have more room in the hips and then you have up here this dart that kind of helps form the skirt around the slope of your, of your hips, around your butt. And I made sure that the length from right here to here matched up with the bodice and the length from right here to here matched up with the bodice as well so that this dart was right on that seam. And then the last thing to note is I made the center back seam just like a half inch longer to account again for the butt. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I just cleaned it up over here, added my seam allowances, and that's it. Then I printed it out. Okay guys, so so far, oh, this is sideways. This is what we got. We got the shell. I'm only fully lining the bodice, I'm not lining the skirt, so. Here she is. Obviously I didn't make a prototype, so are we worried about it not fitting my bust? Absolutely, because I do not like, I don't have a bust like this girl has a bust, but we can pad it a little bit. <laughs> now we're just gonna put in the zipper. To put in the zipper, I'm just gonna surge the edges to finish them off, insert my invisible zipper, and then put in the bodice lining. <gasps> you guys. I don't know if you can see in the camera. I don't know if it's like giving on camera, but in real life, holy crap, this fits me perfect. Oh my God, it's so freaking cute. I know it's like not even done, but I, I'm dying. After I put in the zipper, now's like the time I like to try it on, see how it's fitting. Especially since I didn't make a prototype, I didn't know if it was gonna fit, but I was confident in my abilities and here we are. I guess now I can just sew um, the line to the bodice, just gonna place it right sides together, sew along the neckline, and flip it inside out. <laughs> okay, I'm back to sew the bodice. So, here it is. Here's the lining. Pin just right side together across the neckline. I've also pinned it right here at the center back seam where the zipper is. I'm gonna use half, or no, not half. I'm using quarter inch seam allowance along the whole thing. The only thing is when I go to the corner, like where the straps start. 
on the front and then the back, I'm going to leave a little gap so that I can insert the rhinestones and sew those by hand, like the rhinestone strap, because I'm not gonna be able to um, sew that through a machine. So I'm gonna leave a little gap up here. See where the bust is. And then I gotta choose where I want the other strap, um, probably like somewhere around here. So I'm gonna have to leave a little gap there. So I'm gonna mark it, I'm gonna sew it, and I'm gonna show you how I am inserting the rhinestone straps. So first off, I'm using a tweezer to get that trim through to the back side, just because it's really hard to do by hand. Then I'm just taking some thread and wrapping it around the trim, just making sure I get right in between the two big rhinestones so that it doesn't move up or down. I wanna get right in between two rhinestones. I'm gonna sew it a bunch of times, honestly like six, seven, eight times, um, just so it stays in place. And then do that on all four sides and then you are done. Guys, this is literally gorgeous. Okay, wait, it's not done because we have to add the hearts, but oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this net. Oh, ah! it's so cute. I love the rhinestone straps. I put it on and I stood like in the light and it was just so sparkly. So here's my thing. You remember how I was going to do the cutouts? I don't know. I'm... I'm not into the, I'm not feeling it just because there's through two layers of fabric and I don't want to do, the way I was thinking, I was like gonna sew, I was gonna take another piece of fabric, put it on, sew a heart, cut it out and then flip it in on itself and press it. But through two, two layers of fabric, um, that can get a little bit difficult. So then I was like, oh, maybe I can do it along the hem. And then I was like, oh, I don't know, on the satin, like we could have some issues, satin is so like, precise like you have to be perfect you have to have everything just right or the satin is gonna pucker and you don't want a lot of seams in satin basically we already got a lot of seams going on with the bust so i came up with a solution you guys know i love rhinestones and i have these rhinestone straps so i thought why not go big and put some heart rhinestones on here wouldn't that be cute so i have this little wheel of rhinestones i'll probably end up using um these bigger ones and I'm gonna I haven't decided yet but you'll see what I decide in a second I guess when I put them on um but I'm gonna make little hearts and start oh <gasps> or should I even put hearts should I just like bedazzle the crap out of this no calm down okay guys hold on I know I said I had a plan but you got to check this out so first off the big rhinestones did not look good because these rhinestones are so small that it just it didn't mesh um, however, I do have these little rhinestones that kind of go um, and I was thinking maybe I could do like little hearts at certain places But then I was like, mm, no, but then I was like, whoa, I have this leftover um, Rhinestone string. I actually have a lot more but this is what I cut off from the straps What if I just outline the bust in this? Oh, <gasps> how cute just the little definition but that'd be kind of a lot of stitching and i should have done that before i put the bodice on but i wasn't thinking but then i was like hmm, this dress is very like clean cut what if we added another fun element to it so like what if i like draped the rhinestones in this kind of pattern but i only tacked it at the bust cup so like it was like hanging down but then i was like "Ooh, that could look ugly so now i'm not sure what to do so i guess we'll see Hello. Okay, so before I do the final reveal, which is coming in the next clip, I actually just went out and filmed a bunch of cute video clips so you could get a proper reveal. I just want to point out some last minute things I did to the dress that made it look a little bit more professional, less homemade, and that you can easily do too and incorporate into your other projects. So let's look. Okay, so here is the inside. Um, if you look here, I've understitched the facing, or what is this called? The, the lining. Um, to the seam allowance so that just prevents the lining from like rolling out while you're wearing it makes it look professional I understitch all around and then also for this bodice piece um, I could have stitched it in the ditch which meaning I could have stitched right in this seam line to hold this down however because it was like a satin fabric you could probably easily see that and I didn't want to deal with that so I actually just either hand stitched things down See, I just tacked the lining to the seam allowance or I machine stitched in the ditch, which you can see right here. Um, and I didn't want that all the way around, so I just did it right here. And then lastly, I just added a hook and eye 
at the top of the zipper to make it look more professional. But basically that's it. The only thing I would change is um, take care of the zipper a little bit more. It does pucker a bit. Um, and then of course, obviously it's always good to make a prototype. But for this, I was showing you um, just like the process. I didn't wanna do a fancy dress and I knew it would come out pretty good. So I didn't make a prototype. But without further ado, let's check out the reveal of this dress in three. So that was the final reveal. Let me know what you guys thought of it. If you thought it was cute, if you thought I made the right decisions with all of the design details. But if you like this video, you had fun watching it or you learned a little bit, feel free to give me a thumbs up because that is the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. It would really help me out. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. Yeah, and make sure you are subscribed with those notification bells on. But anyways, I think that is everything. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.